What's going on there, YouTube? So, guys, some of you have been hitting me up lately, asking me what do I think about this car now that I've owned it a while. This is a Dodge Challenger SRT392. Had it for seven months now, and I've got some pretty solid impressions about this car. Being that it's the fourth Challenger that I've owned, four different trims, I got a pretty good idea of uh, what I think about this thing. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at it, huh? So, right out of the gate guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run through the things that I really like about the car, those solid impressions that have stayed with me, or some other things that I've really gotten to love about the car, especially compared to the other trims I've owned. I'm also going to talk about some of the things that I wish were a little bit different. Okay, so my hope here is that uh, you'll be able to benefit from my experience, my mistakes, and also my positive uh, uh, impressions of the car so you can make the best decision for yourself and enjoy the car as uh, as much as you can because let's let's get real here right we don't buy these things for the gas mileage nobody buys a 6.4 liter car to save the earth um, we buy them because we enjoy them all right and we, we save the earth in our other ways right so here we go first thing right out of the gate guys what is it that I uh, what are the things I really like about the car Right out of the gate, man, uh, being that we're outside here, is the braking power. Six-piston Brembos are unbelievable. 15.4-inch rotors. These things stop you on a dime. Not only do they look great, but they perform great. There are some people who out there who are saying, ah, you know, six-piston, four-piston, what's really the big difference? I don't see a whole lot of difference. Believe me, when you're doing 70 in a 35, and suddenly you got to hit those brakes to make that turn with 50 feet in front of you, uh, and you make it with no problem, and it feels like the car was meant to do that. No shuddering, no shaking, nothing like that. Feels like the car was meant to do that, was born to do that. You know you got the right one, man. Um, the brakes on this thing are phenomenal. I love it. It's one of my absolute favorite things about it, above and beyond. Uh, the last Challenger I had, which was an SRT8392, really, really blew it out. Uh, another thing I really like about the car is just the general color scheme, okay? So this is bright white. Um, there's really no flake in the paint at all. I kind of go back and forth on that, but generally I like it because of just the way white in general goes with the other pieces here. So you got, of course, the red Brembo brakes. You got the hyper black wheels. You've got the badging here. And then, of course, when we get to the interior of the car, really sets it off right. And... Uh, you know, the white with the red, the hyper black, and the caramel interior is just sick, man. I love it. This is what sold me on the car, and this is kind of the third thing that I love about this car, is this interior. The tan Laguna interior is something that, you know, I had a, I had a green with NV392 before this, and I really, really loved that car. And for me to get rid of that, I really had to be in love with something else. This is the one that stole my heart, guys, all right? This is the Philly that took my heart. This interior, not only is it plush, it holds up really, really well. I know some people have the Black Laguna, and for some reason it's given them an issue. I haven't run into any of that at all. No, like, weird streaks or anything like that. Everything looks great. Also, a perfect color match with the door panels. Okay, these door panels, you got leather here. You've got some kind of plastic here. It's a perfect match. It really, I don't know what it's going to look like in 5 or 10 years, but right now, out of the gate, um, it's a perfect color match. So next thing I, I really like about this car guys is the different drive modes that you can get with this car. Now I'm not going to walk through them all. There are a million videos out there from different cats who are telling you about the different drive modes. But basically you've got four different cars right here. Okay, You've got standard street mode which is what you get whenever you get in and start up the car. You've got sport mode which loosens it up a bit. you got track mode which tightens it up a bit. And then you've got a custom mode. You can you can make the uh, different settings that you like. There's also a fifth mode, though. Okay, and that usually doesn't get mentioned in the car reviews, and that is this right here, a little old traction control button right here. Right, you press that, you hold that for a few seconds. Look what happens. Oh, electronic stability control off. A lot of people make the mistake in thinking that the sport mode completely disengages the stability control. Um, that's not true. You've, uh, they've got to loosen it. They can't, the Dodge ain't about to make it that easy for you to like get into a car accident and kill yourself, right? Um, so what you do there, you hold that button and it will loosen up that uh, traction control even more than what you get from sport mode. Now it's not 100%, I don't know what percent it is, but I'll tell you there is a huge difference 
If you don't think so, drive around in your car in sport mode for a minute, right? Go to a little lonely road, go up to a stop sign, try to do a little burnout, hit the gas there, see what you get. Go back to the same spot and do the little uh, hold the button trick there and then uh, repeat and see the difference. You will see a difference, I guarantee. If you haven't discovered this yet, guys, <laughs> and this is true also with the Scat Pack and with the SRT, I'm sorry, and with the, uh, the RTs in general, um, you're gonna love it, man. It really unleashes a bit of the power of this car um, in ways that, uh, that you might not have seen before. You know, the point here being about five different drive modes that I get out of the car, and for me, that's really significant, man, because, you know, when I got this car, I thought, ah, the drive modes, you know, I'll play around with them a little bit, you know, it ain't really gonna, not really gonna do a whole lot with them. The truth is, man, you know, I get into a, driving to work in the morning and I'm sitting in traffic, dude, I don't care about, you know, my, my throttle response. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want a nice smooth ride, man. I'm thinking about work. I'm getting my mind in the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really worried about any of this stuff. However, when I'm leaving work, uh, especially like on a Friday, you know, when I have a little bit of fun and when I release a little bit of tension, man, just throw it into sport mode, get a little loosey-goosey, have a little fun, you know, light up the tires a little bit on the way out of the parking lot. It's always a good time. Um, when I get home, taking my wife and the kids out for dinner, and they don't want that, uh, you know, bumpy bumpy ride, or they don't want the herky jerk of like the, you know, the throttle response or whatever, keep it right in default mode, which is the street setting, nice and smooth. They'd never even know that they were in a muscle car. Also, my mom came to visit. I did the same thing, you know, and she actually said, "How nice of a ride is this car?" You know, let alone. She had no idea, no, and if I just put it in track mode, she'd be complaining about the car, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, all that said, it's really great to have a lot of options here uh, like you do. Um, so, some really, really good features that I enjoy about the car. Um, I mentioned before the exhaust. You know, the exhaust on this is really good right out of the gate. And, you know, you've been hearing about this for a couple of years now. I'm not going to reiterate what you've already heard about the stock exhaust on the, um, the SRTs and the scat packs, right? They sound really, really good out of the gate. You really don't have to do anything to them. Um, some people go ahead and they do that. You know, they put a whole new exhaust on or they do a mid-muffler delete or a res delete or they do the full straight pipe, whatever. For me, um, the last two challengers I've had, I've done the resonator delete just to really open up the sound a bit, loved it. This thing, I've owned it now seven months. I don't really feel the need to do that yet. I've got my days, for sure, where I'm feeling like, ah, you know, I wish this thing was a little bit louder, have a little bit more fun with it, and I very well may do a mid-muffler delete on this, but right now, I'm not really feeling it just yet, so I think that's a really, really good thing that the stock exhaust on this thing comes so well right out of the box, so to speak, that I'm not feeling the, uh, the urge to do that. Last couple challengers I've had, I've had them literally for only days and I've gotten the exhaust on them uh, treated. Okay, and the last really, really great thing about this car that I really enjoy or appreciate anyhow is the early alert system. Okay, combined with the backup camera, that makes this car so much more safe without either of those things, all right? My last challenger I had did not have a backup camera, did not have the early alert system. These cars, as we know, are quite big, right? They call them boats, whatever, man. We know they're big cars. We love them just the same, right? Fact of the matter is, with that C-pillar back there, man, this thing can be kind of hard to see out of sometimes when you're backing up. You know, you got a 4,200-pound car. You don't want to be running over anybody. So if you're looking for, you know, if you're considering buying a Challenger, especially brand new and you're looking at different options and stuff, you know, you got your choice of the lot or you're going to pre-order, really take a look at that that uh, that safety package man because this again it's a big car you want to be safe if you're not you know I've owned these things now for five years four challengers in five years I'm still not totally comfortable driving the car back in and out of parking lots I'll, to I'll be totally honest with you guys this is a big car and uh, you know it, it, any little thing like that like that type of uh, technology is going to help you you know, keep you from having an accident, hurting somebody, or hurting your car, or somebody else's car, you know, it's all a good thing. So those are the things that I really, really like about the car, above and beyond the other Challengers that I've owned. There are a lot of other things I like about this car that have also been in the Challengers, you know, the heritage styling, the power, all that other good stuff. I'm not going to get into it right now. You can, pick, you can uh, check out my other videos if you're interested in that, guys. So, what are the things that I'm not so psyched about this car? All right. There are a few things I want to run by. Okay, first thing out of the gate. 
but I'm not so psyched about this car. In fact, it's a huge disappointment, man, because I really liked uh, this this about my other Challengers. <sighs> Is the fact that if you want to tune this baby, you can't just get a tuner. You have got to get a new PCM. Okay, back here, little PCM board back there. You have to buy a hacked one in addition to a tuner and be in order to be able to do a simple basic tuning on this car okay and that's a damn shame because you may know that these challengers are underrated dodge says that this is 485 horsepower 475 torque um, dyno tests prove otherwise um, it is more powerful car than that after you have tuned it okay even a simple basic tuning you unleash the power in this car let alone putting headers and doing other other types of things to it you know you can get you get well over 500 horsepower out of this car unfortunately you can't just plug in a tuner and do what you got to do you know you've got to go ahead and spend like an extra eight hundred dollars on top of the cost of the tuner in order to be able to do that i haven't done that yet just because for me the power is good you know i'm not hitting the track um, I'm not trying to be out there competing with other cats who have got muscle cars, not yet anyhow. Um, sure, would I like a little bit more power? Would I like to be able to, you know, do those, burn those tires out a little bit more? Sure, I mean, who wouldn't? But am I going to be spending an extra $1,100, $1,200 just to be able to do that, to add, you know, 30 horses to the car? No, I'm not going to do it, man, at least uh, not, not, not just yet. So that's number one, that real big inconvenience, because with the previous challenge was all you had to do was just simply buy a tuner. Okay, so that's that. Next thing is this right here. See this badging? Well, if you ever want to remove it, good luck. Because unlike the previous challengers, you know, prior to 2015, you can't just pop these things out easily. Now there are, fortunately, there are people who have posted tutorials on how to remove the badging in case you want to do that I want to remove the badging I have tried to remove the badging a couple of times not with any success yet though okay each time I do it I feel like I'm about to break the grill off of the car really really don't want to do that so uh, for me that's you know it's not a big deal at all um, but I did I do really appreciate the old older challenge was where you just simply had to put your fingers in there and pop it right out and if you ever wanted to put it back no problem you know the instructionals right now are pretty much just like yeah you know you can drill it out and basically ruin the badging or you can really press your luck with trying to to um, get the thing out by hammering out the little rivets or whatever that are in the back that are holding the thing in place which to me is is really really annoying so again not a big deal but you know just wish it was a little different I also wish the chin spoiler was a little different I really preferred the older um, SRT8 chin spoiler on the front had the little air chambers uh, grooved out and stuff it was a little bit more bold looking um, again a really really minor thing compared to the previous challengers but just something I wanted to mention because every time I look at it I do think about that another thing um, and this is probably the last thing that I wish was a little different um, that's got to do with the back of the car now the uh, tail light assembly I think on uh, the 2015s and later are fantastic I think they're really really great I really wasn't a fan of the previous Challenger you know they they, they made it look like the 1970 but it was just like all bumper and all tail light and that was just kind of lame okay I had a HPP um, a Daytona taillight overlay kit over mine just because I didn't really like it. This one uh, I think is much much bit much better. Um, I added the uh, Challenger script badging there just to make it even more like the 1971 uh, of which this is based. One thing I really don't like though unfortunately even though the glossy I think looks really good man it, it looks like Freddy Krueger is the one who's opening up the trunk every day and that's really really unfortunate man because um, you know no matter what um, you do you're gonna get scratches here every time you, you try to open the thing up um, Now granted I bought the car secondhand second owner So and those things those scratches were there before I got it But even then it's gotten a little bit worse since I've owned the car despite my best efforts to try and and um, um, Minimize that uh, that exposure so um, I know some people are doing different things They're plastic dip in the back they're putting vinyl wraps over them and stuff 
and that's all cool some of it looks really really good and I probably will try experimenting with some of that but generally speaking you know it's just one of those things I wish Dodge thought about a little bit more maybe use a different type of material that was glossy but you know wasn't gonna be so prone to that kind of scratching um, so again these are really really minor things that I just wish were a little different generally speaking I'm really really happy with this car the only issue I've had with it I did have a, an ABS traction control issue one time my brother and I were on a road trip and uh, all of a sudden like these lights popped up saying that, that I needed to get those things serviced and um, a couple months later they popped up again and then I was hearing this really weird thing going on with my brakes where basically the brakes were pulsing because they thought that they were um, you know that I was like slipping on water or something when I was just simply pulling out of my driveway so it turned out to be a speed sensor they swapped it out it was covered under the warranty wasn't a big deal um, those types of things happen you know any type of make of a car you're gonna have some type of you know minor issue like that um, so all that said man I'm really really excited about the car still um, I have a lot of fun driving it every time I get in I'm still like a, a kid in a candy shop you know I mean these things were made for people who love the heritage of muscle cars. You know, even if you weren't a Mopar guy back in the day, you know, you see these things coming down the road, man, and it just speaks to the past. You know, the Camaros and the Mustangs, you know, I mean, yeah, they're sports cars now and they're great at what they do. And I'm not dissing any of them because I'm friends with a lot of dudes who uh, have those cars and some of them are, are, are impressive, truly. But that heritage feel, man, you can only get from a Dodge Challenger right now. Um, you know, you've got the Hellcat, obviously, um, new wide body that's just coming out. You've also got the Demon, and uh, God knows what the next iteration is going to be. Um, I get the sense that um, that Mopar, that uh, FCA, is really pushing the envelope right now because with all the automation and electric cars and all this other type of crap that's coming on down the road, um, people look at what the, what the Dodge Challenger offers and you know they really see the value in it man because it speaks to the past and uh, you know I'm all about moving forward and about progress and all that but at the same time man you know some things don't need to die okay so uh, for me what's next um, I'm gonna, definitely gonna be holding on to this baby for a while I've been having fun with it lately um, I've been putting on some mods I don't know if you can see this right here but I added some ghost stripes hood defender stripes right here um, also the other day I added some scat pack type uh, the scat pack style stripes um, this is a really light light matte uh, plasti dip coat uh, took me a while to get that right by the way I just posted a video on that if you want to see a nightmare with plasti dip <laughs> you can watch that video but generally speaking man really really been enjoying this car um, one thing I'd say um, you know if you're looking at say this versus a scat pack you know the scat pack I think is an is an amazing deal um, you know you can find those things right now like I saw some 2017's that are being sold right now as I'm saying this it's October 2017 so the 18's are hitting a lot I'm seeing 2017's fully loaded that are being offered for under 40 grand which is amazing um, including with some upgrades including leather interior and convenience package and, and all that other type of stuff that's a steal man that's a steal and one thing I really like about the scat packs over the SRT is that it's much it's more raw I mean you don't get as many features you know you get the four piston instead of the six piston unless you get the dynamics package um, uh, but uh, you know, if you want a, just a raw muscle car, man, you know, in that real heritage feel and you don't care about leather seats and that type of stuff, man, the Scat Pack is, is really the way to go, man. If I was looking at buying a new Challenger right now and I really wanted that 6.4, that's probably what I would go for, man. I'd probably go for a Scat Pack just because they're fun, you know. I also really like the TA package, too. Um, then again, um, you know, spending an extra 10 grand over what a scat pack is is it worth it having the graphics and a few other things for me probably not though I gotta say man that black on black TA package is one of the best looking cars I've ever seen before in my life man that thing is just so sick um, every time I see one of those things man I just stop and like take a million pictures of them because I think they're so uh, they're pretty amazing the one kind of neutral point I want to mention on this car 
um, is an important one and that is the color now I like the color scheme a lot but one thing that I kinda miss from my old green with envy um, is that that sort of Mopar color boldness you know that was one thing I think that set Mopar aside from everybody else back in the day man was you know plum crazy and go green and panther pink and those colors man that were a little over the top and they had fun names attached to them and you know and they're doing that now they've been doing that with the challengers now for years um, now that I've got a white one you know it's definitely much much more low-key you know and I'm not an attention seeking guy I'm a, pr a pretty reserved guy so I'm not talking about like people like coming up and talking to me about the car I'm just talking about like that heritage piece of it man you know so whenever I see like a sublime green or a PCP purple you know whatever you know there's something that 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 gets stirred that you don't get from just white and as nice as this car is you know there are definitely days where I'm like man I do wish this thing was sublime or I do wish this thing was uh was uh was purple just because you know it's it just speaks to the past a little bit more and uh I know some of you can appreciate that so guys that's all about I want to say about this here um Hit me up in the comments section if you have any questions, if there's anything in particular that you want to know what, what you know about this car, what I think about it. You know, I do use it as a daily driver, so um, I'm behind the wheel in it pretty much every day, um, having fun or otherwise just kind of using it, getting to work back and forth. So feel free to hit me up, man. Thanks, guys. As always, I appreciate the support. Make sure you check out my Donuts and Dodge videos that are on the channel here as well. Featuring my son and I. I'm going to be shooting a bunch more episodes this fall. Looking forward to sharing the experience with you guys. So, thanks again, guys. As always, 